And yes, we are back here at 807 with Dave King and Matt Martin, and we want to go to the phones. And as promised, we have uh, Scott Braddock on line one. Scott, good morning. Morning, Dave and Matt. How are you all? We're doing well. How are you? Doing really well, and I appreciate the chance to talk to your audience. I'm excited about being on KFYO here regularly. Yeah, well, uh, Scott Braddock is the editor of the Quorum Report. And Scott, you know everything that's going on with the new legislative session in uh, in Austin. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yes, sir. I like to say that my sourcing is so good that I can't actually share everything I know about what's going on. <laughs> you know, if if if, uh, if I reported even ten or fifteen percent of what I know, there might be a hit out on my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is the first time you've been on our program. I know you've been on Chad's a yes, couple sir. times. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about the Quorum Report? Sure, absolutely. It's the insider scoop on what's going on in Austin. Uh, you know, I like to say that we're the community newspaper for the Texas Capitol, and it's an important community uh, because it is uh, the folks that you in Lubbock and folks around the state have sent to Austin to represent your interests. It's the lawmakers, it's the staffers who work for them, it's uh, lobbyists as well, it's political consultants, political professionals, but we get a lot of political junkies as well, and of course we welcome everybody to come in and check out what's going on at their state capitol. We've got a free email sign up for you if you want to you know, keep track of what's happening in real time at the capitol at quorumreport.com. Okay. Um, so one of the big things that uh, has come out uh, within, I guess, the last week is the the budgets from both the House and the Senate. One of the big things uh, seems to be education. Um, now, I know the Senate said that they were going to give about $5,000 or they were putting enough money for $5,000 per teacher uh, up raise for the next two years. My, I did have a question about that. Is sure. this is this money budgeted specifically for the teachers, or is this something that uh, the school districts are going to be able to use themselves? Well, that's the idea. I mean, they're looking at uh, $3.6 billion of state funds for uh, $5,000 raises for teachers. You know, in the past, the lieutenant governor uh, has been criticized for putting forward proposals to pay teachers more, uh, to either give them a raise or give them a bonus, but make the school districts pay for it. Uh, this looks like something where the state, uh, and by the way, none of this is final, of course. This is right, their, yeah, this is early. Uh, this is their initial proposal. We'll see, you know, the, everybody's singing Kumbaya right now. We'll see how long that lasts. But, you know, uh, when they start look to look at these proposals, uh, it is definitely a result of the election uh, where business and education interests uh, definitely had an impact in what happened in the statewide races as well as, uh, you know, some of the down-ballot races where uh, actually Democrats were able to pick up some seats in the legislature this year. Uh, and it seems like the leadership has gotten uh, at least one message, which is uh, the Texans this past year were interested in supporting teachers and supporting public education. But, of course, how that uh, ends up happening, devil's in the details. So we, got, we, got, we have uh, 8% or so more of, uh, income this year than expected. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. They're looking at about $119 billion wow. uh, in... Well, $3.9 billion revenue. raised for the teachers, then, is yeah. can easily be covered, then. So... It seems like they should be able to handle it. That's right. So um, the other question I had is, is this uh, setting up a, another... Are we having any more problems with the funding from the ISDs? In other words, um, is, are these going to be mandates that are funded directly by the state, or the ISD is going to have to put some money in there, uh, which could potentially... Uh, make you raise taxes well you know that's again that's where the details start to get worked out right i mean this whole thing is a tug of war between the local uh, school districts and local governments and the state government and you know a lot of proposals can be uh, popular because sure everybody wants to support teachers but how does that actually get paid for um, you know the, the house when it put it forward its proposal before the senate this week they didn't have that uh, that dollar figure in there uh, for the you know teacher pay raises and so who knows if it's actually going to happen, but uh, a lot of this has to do with how much people are paying in property taxes locally, as you allude to. And, uh, look, the, the state is in a weird position on this because you have Republican leadership in Austin promising that property taxes, and you've heard this before, right, politicians like to promise the moon, you, know, you can pay less in taxes but get more services, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the struggle here is uh, that the state is not actually in charge of how much you pay in property taxes. So the proposals um, are to sort of rein in local government and tell them they can't raise your taxes as much, uh, but none of that would actually lower your property taxes. And at the same time, they're making promises to give more money to schools. Over on the House side, 
Uh, the proposal they put forward w- would put uh, nine billion dollars into public education, uh, nine billion additional, in, you know, in, uh, you know, in addition to what's already being done for public education. Uh, and so, again, these folks have gotten the message that that's what uh, leadership in Austin needs to do. Uh, but again, working out the details is going to be a tough lift. Are, are the strikes part of this as well? Well, there have been strikes around the, the country. I don't know. Did you have any there in Lubbock? We no, no, no. There haven't been any, as far as I know, in the state of Texas. But yeah. mm-hmm. but around the country, the teachers have started to strike. It seems to be kind of like a domino effect going on. Well, it's an interesting point because a lot of the places where these strikes are happening, I mean, some of them happening in uh, you know liberal California, but also you had uh, big demonstrations in you know bright red Oklahoma, right? Yeah. And so... Right. Uh, and so it's it's not a partisan thing. It's uh, you know it's a public education thing, uh, and I think that uh, you know the leadership in Texas certainly doesn't want to see that here. Okay. So one of the other things in uh, the difference between the budgets, you had the Senate and the House having a huge difference in what could happen to the vet school that we're looking at uh, putting up in Amarillo. Yeah, and that's been an ongoing thing. Of course, as you know, it's been a fight for how long? For fifty years or something? You know, whether or not uh, you know Texas Tech with the system would have. A vet school has always been, you know, some back and forth with Texas A&M and the, the officials there not wanting Tech to have a vet school. It seems like the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, you know, the new Speaker, Dennis Bonin, is interested in supporting that proposal. Uh, you know, it looks like uh, the Texas House has put forward some, some dollars for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, th- this is the heavy lifting that happens at the Texas Capitol. When they, when they talk about the overall budget, which for 24 months is about 230 billion dollars and trying to project how much revenue is going to come into the state over that same 24 months it's a herculean effort and of course it's the only thing that they actually have to accomplish by you know by state constitution they have to pass a budget that is balanced uh but getting all those details worked out uh could get ugly and so while they're all singing kumbaya right now we'll see how long that lasts so uh, they they had talked about not putting money into the rainy day fund on the last le- legislator le- legislative section. Um, right. This, but it sounded like to me, I think I heard that they actually did end up putting money in there. Did that just kind of leak over from what they thought they were going to make versus what they did make? Well, it's an interesting question. You know, the economic stabilization fund or the rainy day fund it came in at about fifteen billion dollars, according to the comptroller Glenn Hager, uh, when he laid out his revenue estimate last week. Uh, and of course, the economic stabilization fund or rainy day fund uh, is uh, funded through oil and gas severance taxes. So it's been, you know, a good two years in the patch. It's been pretty decent, although as we know, oil prices were cratering. Uh, you know, toward the end of the year. And I think we're just over 50 this morning. Uh, crude is at 52.64 this morning, so it's uh, kind of on its way back up. Yeah. Uh, but when they are, you know, when they're looking at spending money out of that rainy day fund, um, they have to look, uh, you know, look over that at least over the next year and try to predict, which is very difficult, especially in this volatile market uh, that we've seen. Uh, but try to predict where those oil prices are going to be. Uh, and you know, in the last biennium, uh, in the last two years. Uh, the comptroller had said that he thought that the average price of a uh, barrel of oil would be um, around uh, around seventy five dollars you know going into two thousand and seventeen He was pretty close to right, uh, but then of course it dropped in eighteen uh, and so that means that conservatives are going to argue that they don 't need to go spending a whole lot of money out of that rainy day fund. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Patrick has said that uh, the Republican leadership has done the right thing by leaving that money in place, although as I mentioned. With the rainy day fund at fifteen billion, that's about three billion more than they had expected. They thought it would be at about twelve billion. So I mean, uh, you know, to the question you asked earlier, I mean, is there money to cover that pay raise for teachers? Absolutely, but that's a decision they'll have to make. Yeah. Mm. So uh, it, are they seriously? I, I guess my question uh, is, with the rainy day fund, was uh, are there people seriously looking at pulling money out of that rainy day fund right now? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, uh, when they when they look at how much is there, uh, you know, fifteen billion. Uh, I don't know about you, but it sounds like a lot of money to me. Um, it, you know, they, th- these folks um, have that at their disposal, and if you had savings, uh, you know, it's what you use to dip into when times are tough. By the way, the economic stabilization fund was not set up only for one-time expenses. This is what some people have argued. When it was created, it was actually put in place because lawmakers had noticed that when the economy goes south, that demand for government services goes up. And we're starting to see more signs. You saw some of the headlines this morning, of course, that, uh, you know, there's more worry about whether we'll see a recession. Uh, You know, of course, Texas, as an economic...
economic engine is usually the last into a recession and the first one out. God bless us all here. Uh, but sometimes we do need a little bit of extra help, and that's why that savings is there so that they can spend out of that fund and not raise your taxes. And the thing that the comptroller has raised is you know, the fact that it's overnight cash in that account. It draws 1% interest. They're not investing it. Uh, you know, A lot of folks are under the misconception that that money is in there and it's drawing, you know, maybe it's being invested like an endowment would be, uh, and that's what uh, the comptroller would like to see. He'd like to be able to generate as much as $300 million, uh, out of that, uh, I think, per year, uh, based on whether or not he could restructure that fund yep. more like an endowment, but he would need lawmakers' permission to what, do that. Last year he was wanting to take everything over a certain amount and do that with, with that, right? Some, everything over like $8 billion or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, he's had several proposals to do that uh, in the time that he's been comptroller, but uh, it uh, hits a brick wall in the Texas Senate where the lieutenant governor, Patrick, has said uh, that uh, he thinks that uh, money should to be saved in that account and not touched. Okay. Um, so we're talking with Scott Braddock, the editor of the Quorum Report. Yeah. And, Scott, real quickly, in the time we have left here. Mm-hmm. Poor Beto O'Rourke, he's in and out of a funk, he says, huh? <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, it, well, did you see he uh, wrote this piece on uh, what the, this website called Medium.com, which, you know, people can put up their essays about whatever, and uh, he had said he was in and out of a funk. He basically was describing a man who's going on a journey and trying to find himself uh-huh. after his campaign is over, and after his career in Congress is over, he had said that uh, he was, uh, you know, in the first, for the first time, uh, in a position where he was not working, and it had been 20 years since he had not worked, and he did not know what that was like. Must be miserable to be <laughs> a really wealthy guy sitting around with nothing to do. Uh, and so uh, it seemed to me... Is he wealthy? Uh, yes, sir. In fact, uh, he uh, married into wealth in El Paso. His uh, father-in-law oh. is a billionaire out there. And uh, look, I mean, this is a guy who really doesn't have anything to do after being you know, this rock star for the last huh? year. Uh, and it, it read to me, I don't know if you looked at any of it, but the, this piece that he uh, wrote, it seemed like sort of a cry for a response from his supporters because there's all this talk about whether he would run for the Senate or maybe run yeah. for uh, the White House. And so I think he put that out there to try to gauge their support. We'll see what they say. Yeah. Well, we we got to go. Uh, but it's been interesting talking with you, Scott, and we want to do it again. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. All right, that was uh, Scott Braddock, the editor of the Quorum Report. Yep, quorumreport.com. Yeah. Interesting. He's got his finger on the pulse of what's happening down in Austin, that's for sure.